In this video, we are going to talk about microservices config server. What are the things we are going to discuss? We will talk about why do we need a config server? Is there a necessity to use config server in the microservice project or not? About config server, two approaches for creating a config server. First is using Spring Cloud and second is Pivotal Cloud Foundry or PCF. We will also talk about what a mature config server looks like and with respect to architecture design, we will talk about two approaches on a simple terms. First is config first and second is discovery first approach. So let's start. If I ask you what are the things stored in application.properties, the very common answers could be DB configuration like username, password, data source, URL, login configuration, application configurations like application name, server port, and security configuration. And if you look, all these configurations are stored in application.properties and this application.properties when you build the jar is part of that so all these configurations will be part of the jar now think that if you keep changing this configuration frequently what will happen so the question is is there a problem with having changing configuration as part of your jar? In order to answer, let's understand that you have an API and this API you deploy to a cloud or a traditional server. Now, when you do the configuration change very much frequently, you would also have to reflect those configuration changes to the deployed application. In order to do that, you would need to repackage your jar and redeploy your jar. If you have two or three microservices in your project, it is very simple and that you can do manually or using a CI CD pipeline also. But think that if you need to scale those microservices on a regular basis or you have 10 50, 100 microservices. You do manually? No. So what is the approach here? You would need a mature config server. But hold on, we have not talked yet about config server. So before moving to talk about what is a config server, let's have a look at a few important points with respect to config server in a microservice project. Is it mandatory to use? The answer would be no. It depends on the business use case. If you have some frequently changing configuration, then it is better to store that outside of your application jar or var or your file. And if you store outside of your application's jar and you change it, you need to reflect those in your deployed application. In order to accomplish this, you need a service that can effectively manage and reflect those external configuration in the deployed application. And that service we call as config server in microservice architecture. So what is a config server? If we talk about the definition of config server, I would say a service which helps in effectively managing and auto reflection of frequently changing application configuration to deployed applications. Here, I have talked about two important terms. First is effectively managing and second is auto reflection. Now these two terms are important key aspect of a mature config server that we will talk about in later point of this video. But the question here is how I can effectively manage and auto-reflect those changes. In order to proceed on that, 
Let's have a look on how do we create a config server first. In order to create a config server, you can use Spring Cloud package that provides you Spring Cloud config server. If you are using a Pivotal Cloud Foundry, a licensed one, you can have config server through service broker. Now, the important point with respect to this config server through Pivotal Cloud Foundry is, this config server is based on Spring Cloud config server and it supports Git as a backend implementation. It also supports has a corp vault. Vault is nothing but a storage medium for storing your credentials so that it could not be exposed. If you are using AWS EC2 instance, you can use config server as a normal service just like we do in Spring Cloud package. Now we will look at two approaches. First is using Spring Cloud config server and second is Pivotal Cloud Foundry. If we talk about Spring Cloud, then we can use Spring Cloud Config Server. So you need to create a Spring Boot project, add dependency of Spring Cloud Config Server and Activator. If you want a normal Config Server, Activator is optional. But if you want a mature Config Server, you would need Activator. Then you can annotate your class with at the rate enable config server. Add file bootstrap.properties or application.properties in resources folder of your class path and add the property spring.cloud.configserver.git.uri and provide the git path or git location where you are keeping the external property file. And now the config server is ready to use. If you talked about with respect to interview, when you say you create a config server, interviewer will look for this git path and this annotation at the rate enable config server. Now you have created a config server, you would need a client to use that. In order to create a client application for config server, Remember these two properties going to be important for you. First is spring.application.name equal to byte programming and the path of config server spring.cloud.config.uri equal to http localhost 8081 8081 is the port on which this cloud config server runs. So you have a config server now you have a client application. One more important thing is the name of the external property file should match with the name of the client application. So if in this git path your property file name is byte programming dot properties then the client application name would be byte programming. So if you see the standards it is app name dot yaml or app name dot properties app name is nothing but the client application name now we will move to pivotal cloud foundry in case of pivotal cloud foundry we can create a config server using service broker we would spin off an instance of config server using service broker and then provide the git url username and password for your git repository for authentication purpose and it stored these things as a json and now the service is ready to use for pictorial representation i have attached this screenshot of the config server and if you look at this screenshot you would find that the service here you are seeing is config server and the name of this service is config hyphen server and you have settings plan and overview option and here I can bind my client application through this bind app. So all the client application will be seen inside this bounded apps context. 
In case of client application with respect to Pivotal Cloud Foundry, we need to add this property either in bootstrap.properties or bootstrap.yml file. This is an example of YAML file. So you can see the service that I'm using is config-cyber, the same name that is reflected in the screenshot attached. Now we will look at how a config server works and gradually move to a mature config server model. Here you have created a config server application running on port 8081. You have also a client application called byte programming and this byte programming application is containing a bootstrap.properties file and in this bootstrap.properties file you have mentioned the URL of config server. So it is HTTP localhost 8081. The external configuration of this application file is stored in a git folder. And let's say the file name is byte programming dot properties. Here you can see the name of my external configuration file stored in git that is byte programming is matching with my client application's name byte programming. Now, byte programming dot properties path I need to provide in the config server. Let's put a message called hey byte programming inside this byte programming dot properties. So once you do, you need to push this message to the config server and your application will fetch this message from the config server. Now your config server and your application starts working. Let's update this message to good video. When you update the message, does it going to reflect to byte programming application automatically? The answer is no. So what? Do we need to restart the application? Might be if you're not going for a mature model of the config server. Move ahead and let's see is there any alternate solutions present apart from the restart of this application? If you don't want to restart your application every time you're making changes to this external configuration file, you need to use at the rate refresh scope. You need to put this annotation on top of the class containing your rest endpoints. And when you put this annotation, in order to make it work, you need to call slash activator slash refresh endpoint and you would make a rest call to this refresh endpoint. Then only this annotation at the rate refresh scope will work. This annotation enables reflection of new changes done in properties without the restart of the client application. Now, can I say this is a mature config server. The answer is still no. The reason is, in order to do reflection of this new changes, you are making a REST call manually to this slash refresh endpoint of activator. So is it a better way to do that? Or it would be better if changes are reflected automatically? Yeah, we can do that. And this is why we call a mature config server should be in every microservice architecture that requires a config server. So let's have a look on mature config server model. In order to avoid the REST call to slash refresh endpoint of activator, you would need to add a Spring Cloud Bus or messaging queue in the config server and use a webhook property of the Git repository. So let's say we have a Spring Cloud config server along with the bus and we have an external Git repository storing my configuration files and a client application called byte programming application. Now let's put a message hey byte programming. This message is going to be read by this config server application. Let's update this message to good video again. Earlier, in order to reflect this updated message, 
we are calling slash refresh endpoint of actuator and have put at the red refresh scope. Now we will use webhook of get and internally call using this webhook slash monitor. And you would need a messaging queue, either RabbitMQ or Kafka. To this messaging queue, you would subscribe your config server to this messaging queue and your client application to this messaging queue. Now, if you update this message, this will be reflected to this messaging queue using a publish event and your client application will read this publish event as it is subscribed to this messaging queue also. And this is how the updated message will be read from the config server to this client application. This is a kind of maturity you can say on the config server, let's say 80%. So what is the remaining 20%? In order to make it more reliable, more resilient, you can say that we would need to add fail fast behavior and retry mechanism. Fail fast, this keyword you might have heard in Java with respect to fail fast iterators and fail safe iterators, but here it means when you start your this client application and if your config server is down, this application will not going to be started. In case of retry mechanism, you can say as the name suggests, it will keep trying to restart the config server with minimum number of times given unless it is restarted. So this is how a mature config server model looks like. Let's move ahead to the two architecture approach of config server, config first and discovery first. Let's talk about config first approach. The examples that you have seen till now is all related to config first. That means we have a git location where we have stored this external configuration file dynamically to this discovery server. And when you update the configuration, the client application is now going to read using this config server. So this is called discovery first approach. Both of the approaches have its own advantage and disadvantage. So this was all about the config server from microservice architecture. If you like the video, press the like button or provide the feedback in the comment section. Stay tuned and subscribe for more upcoming videos.